everyone welcome to my youtube channel study with soumya make sure to subscribe this channel if you haven't subscribed till now this channel is definitely going to be very helpful for you and that is our main motive to help you all right so make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell icon so that you don't miss any update or opportunity from the channel itself also do join us at our telegram channel the link for the telegram channel is provided in the description itself so make sure to join so well as promised we are going to start aptitude series so first video if you haven't watched so first complete that video then come to the second video well according to the syllabus first we will understand first we will cover the number system so in this video what we are going to do we are going to cover the important concepts of the number system and after covering these concepts in the next video we will start solving the questions so in this video i have covered all the concepts all the formulas that you should be aware of for solving the questions that are related from number system so that's why make sure to watch the complete video till the end i don't think that this video is helpful for tcs only because number system and all the aptitude topics that we have to cover these topics will be asked in every exam not only in tcs so for sure this is this video is not just specifically for the tcs itself it's for all the companies and any other exam as well so without wasting any time let's get started and make sure to like the video and do subscribe the channel so shuru karte so the first topic that we do have in number system is place value and piece value also don't underestimate any of the topic if you know about this then that's great so you can continue further in the video okay but those who don't know so make sure to revise if you know it then please do revise because what happen we do underestimate the things and when the same question will come you can do the mistake so you can do the revision itself if you are aware of this particular topic so what is place value and what is face value so here we have the face value of a digit is the value of the digit itself irrespective of its place in the number okay so whatever place on whichever place like is like is if it is on one place ten place hundred place no matter the face value of the digit is going to be the value of the digit itself so for example we are having a number that is 518276 so if someone is asking you the face value of 6 then that is going to be 6 itself if i am asking you the face value of 8 then that is going to be 8 itself so what do you understand by this that the face value of a digit is the value of the digit itself okay so that is what face value next concept come is about place value so what is place value place value is the value represented by a digit in a number on the basis of its position in the number so here in the case of face value position doesn't matter but here is the place value position matter so this place value is determined on the basis of the position of that particular digit in the number for example i am asking you the place value of 5 so on which position 5 is ones tens hundred thousand on thousands position right so what we will do what is going to be the place value for 5 5 into 1000 that is 5000 similarly the place value of 8 is going to be ones tens hundred so 8 is on hundred position so it is going to be 8 into 100 that is 800 and 2 is at the units place or ones place so it is going to be 2 into 1 equal to 2 okay so this is the concept of place value and face value next the most important concept and most of the questions will be asked from this one that is divisibility rule and next we have cyclicity rule so first understand the divisibility rule so first of all what is the rule for one what is the divisibility rule of one well there is no such rule in case of one there is no such specific condition because you must be knowing that one can divide any number okay so one can divide any number so every number is divisible by one so there is no such rule in case of one let's talk about the divisibility rule of two so if last digit of a number is either zero or the even number even number do you understand that any number which is divisible by two is known as even number so if the last digit of a number is either zero or the even number then that particular number will be divisible by 2 for example we do have 2 12 24 38 42 64 1000 etc they all are divisible by 2 because you can see they all are even number uh, let's basically specifically let's focus on the uh, last digit so you can see zero we have 4 is even number 2 is even number 8 is even number 4 is even number 2 is even number and that is also even 
so if we are giving 13387654298811213 and someone is asking you whether this particular digit is divisible by 2 or not so are you going to manually are you going to do the manually division manually are you going to divide this by 2 for sure not it will take lots of lots of time just simply see the last digit 3 is it even no is it zero no so it is not divisible by 2 simple right let's talk about the divisibility by 3 so for divisibility by 3 also also one thing just by watching the video if you are thinking that you will be able to get over the things then that can happen but for a particular instance only right so if there is still one month in the exam so what you can do is start making the notes for example here in this video we will cover divisibility rules cyclicity rules and some important formulas as well so what you can do just note it down make a notebook a fresh notebook and making the start making the notes because after a specific time you will forget the things if you are thinking that just by watching the video you will be able to understand each and everything then that's your mistake for sure uh so let's see the divisibility by 3 so if the sum of the digits of a given number is a multiple of 3 then that particular number will be divisible by 3 for example we are having 2997 so what you what the rule is given that sum of the digits of the given number so 2 plus 9 plus 9 plus 7 if you will sum them up then we are going to get 27 so you have to check whether the sum of the digits of a given number is divisible by 3 or not so for sure 27 is divisible by 3 so we can conclude that 2997 is divisible by 3 so you can see these are small small tips these is small small concepts can save your time see if you are aware of this uh, technique you will simply just sum the digits and you'll get to know that it is divisible by 3 and those who don't know what they're going to do they will manually divide 2997 and that is for sure going to take the time because see you have to solve the question just in one minute or even less than that okay so it's your responsibility to save the time other you are going to miss rest of the question so that is why these concepts matter a lot divisibility by 4 so for checking whether a number is divisible by 4 or not what you have to do just focus on the last two digits of the number so if the last two digits of the number are divisible by 4 we can simply conclude that that particular number is divisible by 4 for example we are having 4 suppose i gave you a number 4889967842424 i said just tell me whether it's divisible by 4 or not are you going to divide this by 4 no just in seconds you can tell me 24 is divisible by 4 right it means that it this number is divisible by 4 that simple you know things are easy if you will try to understand them and if you are directly jumping to the question then that can be hard as well okay so now let's see the divisibility rule for other numbers as well so for 5 it is kind of simple if the last digit if the last digit of the number is 5 or 0 that's it So, if the last digit of the number is five or zero, you can simply conclude that that particular number is divisible by five. For example, twenty-five, fifty, seven, eighty, sixty-sixty-five, right? So, all these numbers are having either zero or five at the end. So, that's why they are divisible by five. Let's talk about divisibility rule of six. So, for six, you have to check that if the number is divisible by three and two both. Okay. So, here you have to use the divisibility rule of three. and to both so first you will check whether the last digit is zero or even or not okay so if it is zero or even then we can conclude that it is divisible by 2 then you have to check for the three that if the sum of the digits of the given number is divisible by 3 and so we can say that this particular number is divisible by 3 so if your number is satisfying the divisibility rule of 3 and to both we can simply say that this particular number is divisible by 6 for example let's see 18 so 8 it is even so divisible by 2 and 8 plus 9 8 plus 9 that is also divisible by 3 so we can see we can simply say that 18 is divisible by 6 okay now let's talk about the divisibility rule of 7 so what is the rule a number will be divisible by 7 if the difference between twice the digit at one place 
and the number formed by the other digits is either zero or multiple of seven. So what it what they're actually trying to say? For example, we have six seventy two. So you have to check the difference between the twice the digit at once. So what is the digit at once? Two, and its twice is going to be four. And the remaining digit is remaining digits are sixty seven. So you have to take the difference sixty seven minus four. That is going to give us sixty three. So sixty three is divisible by seven or not? Yes, it is divisible. So you can directly say that six seventy two is also divisible by seven. Okay, so that is the divisibility rule for seven. For eight, so as if in case of four, we were checking the last two digits. Here in the case of eight, you have to check the last three digits of the number. So, if the last three digits of the number are divisible by eight, we can directly say that the number will be divisible by eight. For example, this number we do have, right? So, just by seeing the last three digits, that is eight seventy two, you can say that this number is divisible by eight, okay? Because this eight seventy two is divisible by eight, right? So, that is the rule for eight. Next rule that we do have is divisibility by nine, ten, eleven. So then after we will discuss about the cyclicity rule. Well, you must be getting bored, I know. But see, concepts are very very important. Directly, if I will tell you the questions, then that is going to be, uh, that is going to be kind of problematic for some students, right? Because they are not aware of the concept. So first, let's see the divisibility by nine. So here, the divisibility rule of nine is also similar to that of three. Here also you have to do one thing that you have to sum the digits of the given number, and after summing the digits, whatever number you are getting, if this is divisible by nine, then we can simply say that our number will be divisible by nine. For example, here in this case, here in this case, five plus five plus five, that is fifteen plus three, eighteen. So eighteen is divisible by nine, right? So we can say that this number three zero triple five is also divisible by nine. For divisibility by ten, so well rule for this one is very simple. That at the last, if there is zero, that is one place of the number is having zero. So we can simply say that our number is going to be divisible by ten. So that is the divisibility rule of ten. Let's say the rule of divisibility for eleven. We'll put a focus on this because usually they ask questions uh, based on the divisibility rule of eleven. And also, somewhat students remain confused about the divisibility rule of eleven. So, put a focus on this particular thing. So, how you can determine if a number is divisible by eleven or not? So, just by taking the difference of the sum of alternative digits of a number, we can determine. So, if this particular difference is divisible by eleven, we can say that number will be divisible by eleven. Didn't understood? Let me show you. With the help of an example, so suppose we are having a number nine two three eight nine. So alternatively, you have to take the difference between the digits. Nine minus two going to give us seven. Three minus eight going to give us minus five. Okay, so plus and okay, let us write like this. Nine minus two is going to give us seven. Plus, so you have to take the sum, right? Sum of alternative digits. And three minus eight is going to give us minus five. So let's write it as minus five. And then we have nine remaining. So simply write it as it is. You don't have to add or some uh, add or subtract anything. Write it as it is. So seven minus two is going to give us two plus nine. That is eleven. So we know that eleven is divisible by eleven for sure, right? So what we can say that this particular number that is nine two three eight nine is also divisible by eleven. Okay, so this is the divisibility rule. You don't have to do anything. Just take the alternative digits, take the difference, and add this difference. Add this difference that you have calculated with the difference of another set of alternative digits. That is what you have to do. Okay, so that is that were all the divisibility rules for all the numbers that you should be aware of, right? So now what we have to do. now we have to understand a very important topic that is unit digit topic and mostly questions will be asked from unit digit only and you won't be able to solve if you are not aware of this concept suppose now you must be wondering that unit digit simply like really so if i am saying that how to find unit digit a number given to you is 20 19 what is the unit digit you can simply say 9 what's the difficulty here But if I'm asking you the unit digit of three ninety nine, oh sorry, the unit digit of three twenty nine raised to one twenty three, just tell me the unit digit. Will you be able to tell? 
will you be able to tell no right because you are not aware of the concept that is needed to solve this particular question so that is why it is very very important question a uh, very very important topic basically so make sure to watch this complete topic generally questions will be from this topic only and and these questions hardly take seconds if you are aware of the concept right so you can see here to determine the unit digit of a number having some sort of power we should be aware of the cyclicity concept so what is that cyclicity let us see so you can see here we are having the cyclicity of all the numbers well what is cyclicity so cyclicity is basically about the unit digit of the number and how this unit digit pattern is getting repeated so what you can do either you can just remember this chart or this particular table otherwise if it is going to be problematic for you then i can tell you that how to basically determine the cyclicity how without learning this table you can determine the cyclicity well that is going to be easy for you because if you will memorize then maybe a case that you are messing up the things at the time of the exam so first of all that how we can say the cyclicity of one is one so what do you mean by cyclicity that how the pattern is repeating suppose when i am doing one raise to one we are getting the unit digit as one one raise to two again the unit digit is one one raise to three again one one raise to four again one so no matter which power you are giving to the number one the unit digit is always going to be one itself so it repeat itself after one cycle it always repeat itself in a consecutive manner that is unit digit is always going to be one so that is why the cyclicity of one is one let's talk about two so if i will do two power one this is going to give me two as the unit digit Two pe power two that is going to give me four as the unit digit. Two pe power three that is going to give us eight as the unit digit. Two pe power four that is going to give us sixteen. We are getting what is the unit digit here? Six, right? Six as the unit digit. And if I am doing two pe power five, so that is going to give me that is going to give me thirty two. So now again we got two as the unit digit. Two pe power six sixty four. So Four is the unit digit, so you can see the pattern is repeating again. So two we are getting like as here, then four we are getting as the unit digit like as here, and if you will move further, so we are going to get one twenty eight. That is eight as the unit digit like as here. So you can see the pattern of the unit digit is getting repeated after four cycles. You can see one, two, three, four. So after four cycles, the pattern is getting repeated of the unit digit. So we can say the cyclicity of two is going to be Four. So this is how just taking the power, you can see that you can understand that okay, okay, this is how the pattern is getting repeated. So I can say that uh, unit digit of uh, that cyclicity of two is digit three raised to two will give nine as the unit digit. Three raised to three will give seven as the unit digit. Three raised to four will give eighty one. That is one as the unit digit. Three raised to five, if you will do. So what we gonna get? Two forty three. So you can see the pattern is again getting repeated. That after four cycles, I am again getting three as the unit digit. If you will do three raised to six, so you will get nine as the unit digit. So you can see after four cycles, the same pattern of unit digit is getting repeated. So we can say we can say the cyclicity of three is four. So one is done, two is done, three is done. Now let's talk about four. So when you will do four raised to one, we will get four as the unit digit. When you will do four is to two, we will get sixteen, and here is the six. Six is the unit digit. If you will do four is to three, four is to three, then what we are going to get sixty four. That is again after two cycles, the same pattern of unit digit is getting repeated. So if I am asking you, if I am asking you eight nine seven six four raised to one two three eight five six. Eight nine two. What will be the unit digit? Yes, tell me what will be the unit digit. So how you will be able to tell? So for determining the unit digit, I will solve the question. Just an example here, I am giving to you. For the number, just focus on the last digit only. That is four. So what you can see here, when there is odd power, that is four is to one, we are getting four. Four is to three, we are getting four. So when there is odd power. The unit digit is always going to be four itself, and when there is even power, like is here two, the unit digit is always going to be six. In case of four, I am telling you, right? So 
here the last digit is 4 and you can see this number is even or not even because last digit is 2 right so it is even so 4 is to any even digit it is going to give us it is going to give us 6 as the unit digit right i just told you i just told you okay you can see the how this question looks so difficult so so difficult to you if you are not aware of the concept and after getting aware of the concept just in 20 seconds you will be able to solve even in just 10 seconds right so that is the thing four is done five the cyclicity is one because no matter which power you are giving five raised to one five five raised to two 25 again unit digit is five five raised to three uh five raised to three that is going to give us 125 again unit digit is five so after each cycle five repeat itself so that is why the cyclicity of five is one Six also the same applied in the case of six also that is six raised to one six six raised to two thirty six again unit digit is six six raised to three two sixteen again unit digit is six and this is how the cycle will continue for the case of unit digit so we can say the cyclicity of six is one for seven also you can do the same thing otherwise if I will show you the video is going to be very long and you are going to be bored right. So you can do the same. Now you must have understood that how we are getting this cyclicity. So you can calculate by yourself. For eight also, the pattern will be repeated after four cycles. And similarly for nine, let me show you for nine because this is just two. So nine raised to one, that is going to give us nine. Nine raised to two, that is going to give us 81. Nine raised to three, that is going to give us 729. So you can see after two cycles, the unit digit pattern, the unit digit pattern got repeated. So we can say the cyclicity of 9 is 2 and 0. 0 power anything is always going to give us 0. So that is why it is 1. So now you must have understood that from where we got this. We got this cyclicity associated with the numbers. Now there should be no rectification because I have explained you each and everything. And for sure if you will do the rectification kind of thing. So you will forget at the time of uh, written at the time of thesis written that you are going to give. Right. So what you can do, just memorize 2, 3, 5, 7. 2, 3, 5, 7 has a cyclicity of 4. And rest are very easy. You can just in seconds, you can determine that what is the cyclicity. Just by following the, this approach that I just told you. Right. So that is done. Now, what are the formulas that you should be aware of in case of number system? So first of all, the sum of first n natural number is n into n plus 1 by 2. That you should be aware of. Sum of squares of first first and natural numbers so this is what is square the square of first and natural numbers is n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 divided by 6 the sum of square of first and natural numbers okay that should be cube right okay so the sum of cube of first and natural number equal to n into n plus 1 by 2 power 2 right so this is the formula of sum of cube of first and natural number sum of first n even numbers is n into n plus and the sum of first n odd number is n square right formula for finding the n term for an arithmetic progression is for example you want to find a n term so that is the formula is a plus n minus 1 into d where a is the first term of the arithmetic progression and d is the common difference right sum of n terms in arithmetic progression Okay, so what is the formula for getting the sum of n terms? Here we were finding the nth term. And here we have to determine the sum of n terms in AP. So the formula is n by 2. And here in the bracket we have 2a plus n minus 1 into d. Okay, so these were the important formulas that you should be aware. And that's it for this video. So I hope you understood each and every bit of the video. You understood each and every concept in the video. And if you really did, so make sure to like the video. Show, make sure to subscribe the channel. Do join us at our Telegram channel. What else you can do? That share this video with your friends as well so that even they can understand those concepts. In the next video, we'll be solving the questions based on these concepts and on some other concepts as well, which have to be solved logically, right? So catch you in the next video thanks for watching this video bye bye